Hi, this is James. I'm continuing on my marathon maintenance of my 2001 Allegro bus uh, Freightliner uh, XC chassis. I'm gonna start working on the uh, the air dryer, and uh, all it really is scheduled for is the um, is the air f filter, air dryer um, uh, filter replacement. But bus is uh, 20, uh, 22 years, 23 years old now. And when I do these things, I just, I'm starting to rebuild it. Cause I do have an air leak under there, but it's on a, a relay valve, which will be a, in a next video. Uh, it's not enough. It doesn't fail any of the static pressure tests that you do. And I'm not an expert on this, uh, mainly making it to show that you can do it as a do it yourselfer. I've watched some you I haven't watched a YouTube video on this one yet, but there's a bunch of instructions. Uh, as I started learning the air system here, air braking system and air suspension system, uh, on these diesel pushers, uh, gotten more interested in it. So I, I don't know anything. Uh, so take what I'm doing here with a grain of salt, um, just mainly for information. But I'm sure there's a bunch of other uh, videos you can go find about rebuilding these systems. Uh, one thing I found is like Bendix has a, a crap load of videos to show you how the systems work, which is um, help me out uh, figure out if my this relay um, valve underneath is is a big problem or not in doing what it's not supposed to do. So um, I do uh, going to buy the uh, rebuild kit for that for I think 50 bucks, and it's just a matter of getting under there and getting dirty. This is the uh what I picked up. So these are the important numbers on pre, I think it's pre 2003 diesel pushers. Um, <clears throat> ended up the, uh, the uh, air pressure relief valve um, does come in the, uh, one of the, yeah, I think it's this one here. It's this dryer repair kit, the uh, DQ, uh, 6026 so I didn't need to buy this one but I just carried as a spare um. all right under the bus safety third should be enough that's a 12 ton three ton I don't know roast me in the comments for not having uh, better jack stands under here but here we go so this is what I'm taking out here. Their, their, their tanks are empty. Everything's been let out. All right, as always, this little booger was hard to get out. I had to wiggle. And uh, use a soft millet, very soft. You don't, I don't want to break air hose. So it's a, some type of signal hose when they're small like that. Um, this is the supply line coming out, uh, pretty easy to come off. I think it was a 24. Here's coming in from the, uh, governor and, uh, air pump on the motor. That's the motor on top. That's 26. I think this is either a 13 or 14, 15 millimeter bolt. And then undoing the strap almost done so i'm going to finish taking that off and then the whole unit will drop out and we'll put it on the bench all right i'm going to uh degrease this guy Alright, let's figure this thing out. Alright, this is the rebuild kit. Um, this hasn't exhibited it that it needs to be rebuilt, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. So, it's going to have the turbo saber valve, the purge valve, and which I think is, uh, I think is. I think it's that, but, and then um, there's one else that comes here on this rebuild. 
Okay, I believe this is the purge valve. This is where the water comes out. So it's purging water, not air. Well, air will come out with it, I guess, maybe. I don't know. This is where the heater's at. We don't want to uh, get stuck with frozen brakes somewhere because the element breaks down. Because, you know, all uh, elements go bad after being used for a while. I don't want to break it, but there we go. Yeah, that's pretty gross. And there's the heater element. Looks all right to me. I'll keep it as a spare. And there's another one in there, so if I lose this and it goes flying across the room like what usually happens to me, it's not the end of the world. So I'm just cleaning it out. I'm not going to use any solvent. Um, next, we need to put in the grease. Looks like just straight up white grease that came in the packaging. Um, this is the piston area of it. I went ahead and put the O-rings on. The piston is right here, and um, air pressure pushes it down and pushes the water out through the valve down below. With this grease, it's okay to do more. All right. Nice and solid in there. New snap ring by Conductive Grease, so this came with it and uh, looks like there was some on here and it's going to go in there so I better clean that up now that I look at it all right put the grease on there it's going to go this little guy is going in that pocket there there we go Now, when I took this apart, this was not on there. Or if it was, it's... So it looks like this guy's actually been melted. <laughs> um, which is interesting. Okay, there we go. First thing we have to do, unfortunately is uh we're at the bring in uh splice in the connector i always hate putting splices in it's going to be hanging under there in water but i do have waterproof ones i'll show you how i'm doing that so the, the heater unit that i just threw in there that's dq uh, 6013 um that was about 70 bucks all right next part is to work on the one-way check valve in here so this is says uh determine uh, the dryer um, outlet line, so that's this one here, because th this one down here, let's see, was coming from the from the motor, from the uh, motor area, and this also has the Schrader valve for, so it's this guy here that we we're going to take this guy out. A couple things here, got to remember where this is clocked to, clock like a old analog clock that goes around, so, you know, we're, what do we say, maybe the... Uh, the four or five o'clock um, area of the clock, eh, five, it's pretty close. So it needs to be in that area to line back up. So when I put it back together, I want it basically, you know, being at this angle here. I need, cause this looks pretty big. And that's a whopping 39 millimeters. So here's what I had to use. <laughs> Not my favorite pipe wrench cause it left marks on it hammer and then it started turning after we broke the seal that kind of sucked but 
All right, a little bit of work, but it's easy. Uh, we're gonna replace the innards in there, basically. Um, spraying this, and I think that. And um, inside this, so this is where the air comes out to everything else. So you know, it comes in over here, filtered, dried. Um, water comes out there, discharge there. And um, so I wanna make sure this is clean. I don't want anything um, getting up in there. So I'm gonna plug it with my finger and, and blow it out. All right, so there we go. Old one out, new one's in. Uh, blew that out. Um, I'll blow it out one more time. So you can see the spring was getting a little weak. Um, other than that, everything else looked good, but the spring should have showed you before I put it all back together. Bet you thought I had to remove that. I didn't. All right. The, uh, the, don't have any tape or any foreign particles going in. This is after stuff's been filtered. So anytime you're putting uh, air and putting Teflon tape on your air lines, uh, remember you don't want any of that crap going anywhere else and causing exhaust valves to get stuck open and ruin your day on the side of the road. All right, got to clock back to where I think it needs to be. Actually, a little forward, uh, backwards of where it needs to be. Uh, so when I go back under, if I have to move it that way, I'm okay. I always hate reversing on, um, on Teflon thread, uh, threading, if I can help it. All right, next, we're on to the turbo saver, which should be on the inlet. Drain all the air from vehicles. All right, we got the... Uh, the filter cartridge off. Now the the coalescing cartridge. This is the one that comes in the um, the filter kit too. But that's what makes the magic happen of getting. Ooh, look at that! I'll show it compared to the the new one. Jesus. I think it wants me to get down there. So it's a little dirty down there. Um, it looks like a turbo pop off valve. Looks like a pop off valve. Uh, in there. Um, wow. Okay, I think we're going to have to come in from this side here. And basically what I'm seeing is this and this. So that we must be going after that. And uh, then an O-ring somewhere. So I do have to take this off. Uh, so again, clocking on the valves. This one's pretty straightforward. Six o'clock. And so this is the inlet from from the uh, from the motor area. And that's what I'm going for there. Sorry, I can't make it really focus that well. New tool time. Look at that long sucker. I've gone 41 years of spinning wrenches on my own car and vehicles without needing this guy, but I got to be able to get all the way down in there grab onto that guy. Now the instructions don't say it, but this is the the signal line is what I think it is and where it goes. Boom. I'm going to take this out, take this port off and try to get the uh, turbo valve out of there. Uh, this part always makes me nervous because it's called the turbo saber valve and if I'm screwing this up uh, to save a, a to save a few bucks, um, you know, blow up my turbo or something, if that's what that means. Uh, you know, always something to think about, but I think I'll be all right. And again, this guy's clocked at, um, what do we say, about 9, 9, 10 o'clock? Yeah, we'll go, uh, not 9 o'clock, uh, 10 or 11. Now the instructions didn't say it, but the only way that turbo saver's piston is coming out is through uh, the side with that small air inlet. And then there is no, uh, there's no O-ring for this one. 
I mean, there, it's on there, but there's no new O-ring. So that one there on the heater side. Anyway, it looks like it's greased in there. I need to read some instructions because it right, wants me to, we're basically putting it back together like this in there. So this guy slid in from the other side. The screw is going to come in from this side and the seal turbo seal is going to come in from that side. And I got to be careful not to damage the seal on that side so wish me luck maybe this will work we'll see here's where you need three hands so flathead on that side phillips on this side flashlight to, you know it's just i can't show you guys what the heck's going on because It just won't focus down there. Oh, this sucks. I can feel the head of the uh, screw starting to strip out, the Phillips head. Should have known this when I felt that was hard to get in there. So, now I'm stuck. It's stuck in the donut. Stuck in that seal. I gotta get in there without destroying the seal and back that screw out somehow and i'm going to reuse this one just because it it's got that quarter inch um head on top that's just easier to to deal with i don't know why they gave that one i should have given instructions about presetting it so you can get the threads in there moving right along back together that's where the turbo saver valve came out this is the inlet side, clocked to the right spot. Hey, you can finally see down there. There you can see the black stuff is the, the piston that goes in and out and then the seal. So I think we're good. Next is uh, this thing, the, uh, I forget what it's called. You can see the difference. This is the one that extracts out the water. Um, just need to put the O-ring on, slip it in there. Uh, then the new, uh, new filter goes on and then I start looking through here and um you know so this one's extra so it was right you know they didn't they did not have the gasket installed between there um I already used one that came in part of the other kit so I'll just save this along with a couple other items and uh they did give me new bolts and new um a new plate here probably because it rusts out so um since they gave it to me i'm just going to go ahead and use it uh, all right here we go finished up um the dryer repair kit um this is with the uh the big filter on it and the uh, dust count a uh, dq 6026 uh, got the new, uh, looks like a blow-off valve. I forgot what it's called. It's a uh, air relief valve. You know, it's the big sound that gets made when everything's up to pressure. Um, now I got to put this guy back together here. And basically just using um, some waterproof connectors. Um, pretty simple. ready to go back under the bus after I uh, clip this on everything's back together it's actually not too bad uh, all right these are also waterproof or watertight there we go so, have heat shrinks around it ready to go and there's no movement when I pull hard on it so if you ever use these crimp connectors and there's a little bit of movement 
Uh, means it's not tight. No leaks that I can tell. Um, just the uh, the relay valve for the rear there. So it's like a relay thing. So that's what you can hear right now. Um, so you know, I started at 12:30. I had a lot of other stuff going on, uh, in and out, and watched a little bit of a basketball game, which I need to get back. It's halftime over, but I wanted to get everything back under the bus today. Uh, Got to get it moved, or the HOA will be mad at me. Uh, I think it's three hours and it's the hardest thing to do is where you saw me struggling with the uh the turbo valve tested forward and backwards and um the, the pressure is the same it, their loss is the same because of that relay valve that'll be my next rebuild as i've said a ton of times um it's doable you know i, I think it's probably one of the more advanced ones even though it, it's kind of simple because it's your it's your brakes and uh yeah it's your brakes till next time